Rose with BlackRain79.com. I'm back here with another strategy video for you guys. I know I haven't made any in uh, a little while here, but uh, I'm going to try to get back onto it. So uh, today let's talk about um, double barreling at the, at the micros. So I picked a bunch of hands here, about four, I think, at NL5. And I'm going to talk, I think they're all full ring, and uh, I'm going to talk about... Um, I, they're all spots where I where I bet the turn. I, I raise preflop, I bet the flop, and then I bet the turn. So that's like a double barrel, right? So I'm going to talk about uh, why I made that double barrel, why I bet the turn. Uh, a lot of a lot of the time, it's going to come down to uh, the player type uh, and the card, uh, the turn card specifically. So let's get right into this. So. First hand here, I have pocket fives in early position. Uh, you can see that the stacks are quite deep here, which is something to always keep in mind. Uh, it's always the first thing you should be looking at when you play any hand of poker. So we'll see if we're deep with any of the other people here. But uh, So I just come in for the three times raise, which is pretty typical with uh, pretty much anything. Uh, so we, we so it, this is a 100 big blind effective stack because the one player who called us uh, started with a, roughly 100 big blinds. Um, if we're going to do a breakdown of this uh, player type, we see he's a 17-4-2, that's VPIP, PFR, and aggression factor. It's over a large sample, 975 hands. So um, I would classify this player as a tight passive reg. Um, generally these players are sort of break-even, losing players. They, they've kind of figured out, they've, they've figured out that, you know, playing <clears throat> relatively tight is is kind of the way to win at the micros, but they kind of haven't put the rest of the pieces of the puzzle together yet. They have kind of glaring weaknesses in that, you know, for instance, this player only raises with aces, kings, and <laughs> queens and ace, king, perhaps. Uh, with the two aggression factories, pretty pretty passive, so it's, it's very easy to... Uh, to read this player when he does decide to fight back and you can see with other stuff like folding to steal 90 percent of the time which is pretty uh, unbalanced and stuff like that so that's kind of what we're looking at going into this hand these kind of players very very easy to play against it's it's very black and white um very transparent their play basically so um we catch a, a good flop we are the pre-flop raiser of course um we're against just one one player can see that this player folds to a flop c bet 65% of the time. So I'm generally going to be betting this board regardless, but especially when I got a player who's folding two thirds of the time, this is just a super standard uh, c bet, and usually roughly about two thirds of the pot, as I talk about pretty much all the time, is a good number. And we do get a call from this player. <clears throat> So, uh, as I mentioned before, two things that I'm going to be looking at when I'm betting again, when I'm thinking about betting again on the turn. Number number one, the player type, and number two, the turn card. Let's talk about the player type again a little bit more. We can see that uh, his full to turn C bet is 60%, which is quite high, which means that, you know, he gives up a lot, which is what weaker players, as we already, um, you know, identified this player as a weaker player, that's what weaker players do, is they, they give up a lot. Uh, we also caught a really good turn card. It's unlikely that a player like this who folds two out of three times on the flop um, is going to have an ace in his hand. Um, he's probably the type of player that's going to fold, like if he had ace-jack, he's probably the type of player who folded that on the flop or, you know, any ace, basically. Um, so, and, and this is a card that, you know, obviously, um, you know, should be in our range. It's definitely in our perceived range. Um, <clears throat> when we raise preflop, especially from early position like this. So these two factors together just equals bet again for me. Once again, I just go about two-thirds pot here. I don't think it just it's just always kind of the, the default bet at these stakes. Um, <clears throat> in most situations, two-thirds just seems to work well. I think it's roughly two-thirds or something there. And we do get the fold in this situation. So let's move on to the second hand here and... Uh, analyze that a little bit. So this is a blind versus blind and once again you can see the opponent is very very similar. A tight passive weak reg. 18-5-1. So let's get into it. So he um, he limps from the small blind and as you guys know if you've you know <laughs> read any articles in my blog, seen my videos on Dried the Bar, read either of my books, I'm always talking about um, when somebody does something like this I'm going to be raising with probably at least half the deck. So uh, Ace-8 offsuit is definitely in the top 
half of, of top 50% of hands, so I'm definitely going to be raising this pretty basically 100% of the time. So we do make it uh, four times the blind to go here. It's typically what I make it is four times. Um, I guess three times would be okay. I've just always done four. I think it's, I don't know. I mean, we are in position, so three would be okay, but I think four is just a little bit more, um, I don't know, authoritative. Uh, <laughs> anyways, that's just kind of what I do. He does call. Um, we catch an okay flop. I mean, it's it's slightly coordinated. There's a flopped uh, straight possibility, but it's just one hand. Um, you know, it's it's not the greatest flop. It's not the worst. It's just kind of meh, you know. So he does check to us. And, you know, when we're in position against one player, as you guys know, I'm basically just going to be c-betting 100% of the time almost at these stakes. Um, so we do bets. Again, about two-thirds pot, roughly. Uh, he calls, and we can always just look at the stats here. So he's only folding to a, c a flop c-bet 29% of the time. So this is very typical for this player, right? So on the turn... Um, so once again, the two things that we're looking for are the player type and the turn card. So, uh, fold to turn C-bet, as you can see. Once again, with weak players, they like to fold a lot to uh, to pressure. Uh, when I see this kind of discrepancy, this this massive difference where he doesn't fold on the flop and then he folds on the turn, I'm going to be, like, barreling anything here. I mean, I don't even... I could have... I, I could have king deuce here for absolutely nothing. You know, I mean, king high, no draw, nothing, and I'd be better. I'd be betting my entire range here, basically, against a player like this. Um, can I always check the sample size? I think it's a bit off screen there, but we do have 200 hands on this guy, so <clears throat> it's important to have a little bit of a sample so that these numbers mean something. Um, but in general, <clears throat> you know, when I see this kind of stuff, it's just going to be a bet again. The turn card is is reasonable. I mean, it does give us a draw. It's not really the great scare card that we'd like. I mean, I'd prefer an ace, a king. Obviously, an ace would pair us, but, uh, you know, it does give us, give us a draw, so, I mean, that's great as well. So, and, and just the fact, like I said, this guy just is, is a, one of those weak regs who just loves to uh, call on the turn, or call on the flop and then fold the turn, so I'm very happy to oblige him by uh, betting again and letting him fold, so... Moving on to uh, the third hand here. So we have pocket eights this time, and we're on the cutoff, so just a super standard open, of course. And as you can see, we get called by the exact same player type once again. I didn't mean to do this in this video, but it seems like all the regs are these tight passives. You guys can probably see the same thing once again, 17-3-1. Uh, huge, you know, fairly tight, but a huge difference between VPIP and PFR. He's only raising with the nuts. Very, very passive. Um, and you're probably looking at his fold to flop c bet and fold to turn c bet stats before I even talk about them, because you probably know it's going to happen in this hand. We flop reasonable. I mean, we obviously have pair um, here, which is which is good. There's only one over card. It's, we probably have the best hand right now, anyways, a lot of the time. So, in position, super standard c bet. He calls as he likes to do. This player, same thing, 29% um, uh, fold to, to flop c bet which is low. Uh, as we can see, this player does fold a lot. So you can see there with the pop-up, the, the sample size is actually only two, but, you know, still, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to assume that these, these kind of player types are kind of all the same and that we're going to get folds a lot uh, on the turn, especially when they're folding that low on the flop. And also the big thing as well, the turn card, we got the big ace, big scary uh, Broadway uh, scare card, perfect card to uh, to continue betting on. I'd bet on this card with my entire range, even if I had four or four or five would actually give me a gut shot. I'm trying to think a hand that has no equity at all. King eight, you know, something that has no equity. Um, I would bet here again with that hand. Queen jack, there's a no equity hand. So I, I would bet again with that. So um, he checks to us, I'm assuming. Yes, he does. And we bet again and once again take it down. So... Let's move on to the final hand here. You guys can probably see the pattern at this point. Uh, this time we got ace king, early position. We get oh, we get called by a fish this time. Okay, so we'll see how that changes things. Um, <clears throat> so make a standard c bet uh, on this board versus a fish. Um, 
I don't know, 21, whatever. It probably should be a little bit more, but um, we're probably not going to get folds that often versus a fish on this board. Out of position, uh, it seems like a lot of hands. He, this guy's playing 43% of hands, of course. Um, it seems like there's probably quite a few hands that he'll uh, continue with on here. He's probably going to – he probably called preflop with a lot of sort of – uh, you know, all pairs, probably some low suited connectors, which might have hit with this, you know, even stuff like A6 and stuff like that. So, I mean, he can definitely have some stuff. He's going to call with all of his wheel gut shots, his Ace 5 and stuff. Fish just love stuff like that. So, we do expect to get called quite a bit, but I do have two strong overs, and I think that, you know, he's going to have a lot of hands that completely whiffed as well with the Queen Jacks, the King Nines, the Jack Tens, and, you know, we're just, we're betting for value, of course, against those hands. So, uh, we just continue on. So, all right. So, looking at the player and the turn card. So, once again, we have a player who, you know, I, I just, again, I see the 100% fold to turn, fold to see bet on the turn. That's kind of what I'm looking at. I'm looking at also the turn card, uh, which, you know, I mean, it's not the best card in the deck, but it does give us a draw. It's kind of like the ace eight hand, you know, we pick up a little bit of equity and. You know, I guess I just can't, kind of can't, uh, can't, can't resist in a spot like that, and uh, I choose to just go ahead and uh, continue. So, um, I hope this was useful for you guys. I mean, I'm looking at a lot of things uh, here. when I'm when I'm thinking about making a double barrel. It's basically those are the probably the two main points that I'm looking at. Are the opponent? What what does he do? Is he one of those guys that that is a weak player that folds a lot, or sorry, that calls a lot on the flop and then folds a lot on the turn? Those guys are just absolute targets for um, a double barrel, um, and also the turn card. You know, uh, uh, if it's kind of close like this, I mean, this player. I mean, it, I should say the sample is only one on this player for fold to turn seabat, and he's also a fish. I don't like to barrel fish that often. Um, we do pick up some equity here. We do have two strong overs. Um, so that kind of, uh, you know, picking up equity with a flush, of course, that kind of sways my decision a little bit in this spot. So uh, these spots are never easy. I, I think perhaps I'll make a video in the future, a kind of companion video for this of sort of when I choose not to, uh, to, to double barrel. I didn't want this video to be too long. So I'll see if I can maybe make that in the next week or two. Uh, this was actually, uh, I made this video on a suggestion from a, uh, I believe it was a YouTube uh, comment from a month or so ago. So if you guys have any comments of what you want to see in the future, let me know in the comments as well. Um, thanks a lot for watching this uh, video, guys. Um, if you want to see more strategy strategy videos like this, hit the subscribe button to this channel so you don't miss uh, all the videos that I put out in the future. And also, as linked in the description, go check out my website, blackrain79.com, for tons more uh, strategy articles all about the micros and how to crush them, beat them, all that stuff. So once again, guys, thanks a lot for watching. This has been Nathan Williams with blackrain79.com.